Hey, sports fans, greetings from Budapest, Hungary. It's 1130 local time in Budapest, and I've taken over the press conference room, and it's 24-hour all about Larry. Can you believe it? I am having a espresso with milk. Mmm, it tastes good, even though it's not coffee with Larry. But we've got a busy night to talk about night four. We're going to start with the 100-meter hurdles. Now, you know how I love the 100-meter hurdles. It is one of the toughest events in all of track and field. Speed and agility, 100 meters, 10 hurdles. You have no chance for error. The party's down. It is like watching a NASCAR race, okay? Heat one, Akira Nugent, Jamaica, 1260. Masai Russell, 1260. Sarah Lavin from Ireland, 1269. Sirena Samba Mayela from France, 1271. Meta Graversgaard, 1287. Michelle Harrison, uh, 1288. They were the qualifiers. Heat two, Nia Ali, 2019, Doha champion, U.S. champion in 2023. I think she is on, man. I think she is ready to roll, and I think she is dangerous. She ran 1255 in the seat. Pia Skiriskova from Poland, uh, the Polish champion, uh, European champion as well, 1265. Mariona Furi from our, uh, South Africa, 1271. Lucia Kozak from Hungary, she got a huge cheer, 1271 uh, as well. Those are the four qualifiers. In Heat 3, Kenny Harrison. Now, this is amazing. Kenny Harrison is the former world record holder. She's the American record holder at 1221. The number two, number two, 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 best time ever. She runs 1224 today. The number three, 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 best time. And when she's interviewed by Lewis Johnson on TV, she said, coach, uh, that is Bobby Kersey, coach told me to execute and to go out hard every round we're doing it. I'm supposed to run like I'm going to win. Well, that 1224 did something. In second place was Divine Charlton from the Bahamas, 1244 national record. Third was Danielle Williams, 1251 seasonal best. And fourth was one of our faves, Cindy Sember. We have a nice interview with Cindy. 1283. She is the silver medalist uh, from the European indoors in 22. But I'll tell you, Kenny Harrison, that freaked everybody out. In the Heat Four, Jasmine Camacho Quinn, the Olympic champion, 1250. Nadine Visser from the Netherlands, 1268. Dataji Kambunji, 1271. Now remember Dataji, she is Mujinga's little sister, and she ran a sparkling 1247 Swiss national record just a couple weeks ago. It, I'm turn, I can't remember the meet. So senior moment for a minute. And then in fourth place was Celeste Mucci from Austria, 1290. They're all moving on. In the final heat, the world record holder at 1211, Toby Amosan, who you remember, Toby won the world champs last year. She was provisionally banned. Banned may be the wrong word. She was provisionally not allowed to compete. And she took it up into arbitration and she was allowed to compete. They said, hey, you know what? She didn't screw up. But our friends, the Athletic Integrity Unit, this sometimes is kind of bugs me. They are not happy campers and they may investigate. I don't know what it means. But anyway, Toby gets to compete and that's and she should be treated as a clean athlete and all that kind of happy stuff. So Toby ran 1248. She looked pretty darn good. Megan Tapper from Jamaica, 1251. Michelle Jenicky, she's the Australian who's overly effusive and does the little dance uh, each time. She ran 1271. Natalia Christofi from Cyprus, 1290. Cyprus has some killer hurdlers. I don't know what it is in the water there. Netherlands, Mikey Shin Alim, 1292. She's the last qualifier in the 100-meter hurdles, and that's the end of the 100 hurdles. Okay, our second event is the first round of the men's 800 meters. And, you know, I, I had to ask this question. 800 meter runners this year, there's nobody who's really ahead of the game. But why the hell does every 800 meter runner think that they can rely on their kick and be so bitching? You know what? If I was coaching these guys, I would tell them to pull their heads out. The idea is to qualify, not run stupidly. And there's some guys who just Broke my heart. They should have been in the final. Okay, so 
now that I've gotten that out of my system, because I've been for clumped for about two hours, man, I was looking at this stuff on my phone as I was heading to the, uh, what did I do now? Heading to the, um, the track. And I was just almost screaming. Okay. Heat one, Emmanuel Juan Yoni. Now he's from Kenya. He's been running pretty well. 144.92. Gabriel Twal. He's tough. 145.10. Katalin Tesasanu from Italy. 145.31. Deshipio Masila from Botswana. 145.60. Did anybody not qualify? In the, no, they were all pretty good. Okay. Heat two. This is the one that just. Was this the one? No. Okay. I, it'll be even better. Okay. Matius Borokowski from Poland. 145.40. Max Bergen, the really tough um, British kid, pretty young. I think he's 19. He didn't get to go to the uh, uh, world champs last year because he had a pretty significant injury. He ran 145.43. He made it. But, you know, it's it gets very – it's like roller derby with these things sometimes. Joseph Deng from Australia, 145.48. And Mark English. Mark English has been around for 1,000 years. 145.71. But the Irish team is looking really good. They've got a lot of metal potential. And that was uh, Heat 2. So Heat 3? Th oh, yeah. This is the one that absolutely made me lose my shit. They went out in about 55 seconds. So they came back in 52. Alex uh, Kipnagedich, Kenya, 147.63. Shamal Sajadi, who's a tough kicker, Algeria. 147.87. Saul Ardornas, Spain, 147.97. Isaiah Harris, 148. What Isaiah did is he just let the pace, you know, go. They just let the pace. It was boring. And, and it was like you knew there was going to be a kick and you knew that someone was going to get their butt kicked. And Isaiah went at it with about 150 to go. And he got caught in a mess. And it was getting a little physical, and he should use some more elbows. But unfortunately, he didn't move it on. And I think Isaiah Harris can medal. This kid is really, really good. Now, the one that shocked me was in eighth place, our friend from Bosnia Herzegovina, Amel Tuka, 149.01. I have never seen a guy use elbows better, but also he is the most tactical racer. And normally, when he's really fit, oh my God, you got to you got to have at least 20 meters on him. This guy is just dynamo hum. So uh, Alex Kipgenich, Shamal Sajadi, Saul Ardones, and it was the slowest heat of the 800 qualifying, so no one else was going to go on. So poor Isaiah, it just broke my heart. In heat four, Adrian Ben, Bryce Hopple, Daniel Roden, Philip Ostrowski. Adrian Ben won um, from Spain, 145.37. Bryce Hopple. World Indoor Bronze Medalist, U.S. Champion. Bryce has been running well this year. And most of the time, Bryce is a really cagey racer. But you know what I was really proud about Bryce today? Bryce knows how to use elbows. I'm going to put him on an ice hockey team. That dude got himself in there. He wanted to make the next round, and he did it. That's what he's got to do. His coach would be very proud. In third place, Daniel Roden. And Daniel tried to push uh, Bryce around. And Bryce, you know, wasn't a nice, polite American this time, which was good. And in fourth place, Philip Ostrowski. Tough runner, 145.76. He was the last qualifier from um, Heat 4. In Heat 5, Benjamin Robert, who's a guy, I got to tell you, Benjamin Robert looks like a midfield rugby player. This dude is got some arms on him. You know, he could probably throw the discus too. 146.45. And the guy's run, I think, a low 144. So he won the Heat. Ben Patterson from Great Britain. 146.57. Hey, what is it about the British guys who can figure out how to get through heats? The Americans aren't getting that right now. Uh, third place, Mohammed Atakwi, 146.65. Fourth place, Emmanuel Career, 146.78. Fifth place, Abdelisam Ayuni, 146.85. And in sixth, Clayton Murphy, Olympic bronze medalist from 2016. Clayton's been looking great. He ran a 147. He got into the lead with about 150, 180 to go, and then he just went backwards. Now, I've heard that it was as hot as 112 degrees on the track. These guys were frying. That was part of it. But you know what? The, 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 I want to see these guys. I want to see Americans get through the rounds. It drives me crazy. 
There's a Steve Forbert song from the 70s that says it's called Cellophane City. And the, the line that I always remembered and I would tell my athletes, you cannot win if you don't play. You can't take a medal if you don't get through the rounds and get through the semis. You got to have that mind thing. And there's sometimes American guys at the 800 meters. I don't know what the hell it is, but my God, my blood pressure's up. And we're not going to have that right now. Okay. Uh, let's go to heat six. Wow. We have seven heats in this damn thing. Okay. Abdelita El Guess, 145.24 from Morocco. Andreas Kramer, Sweden. He's a very good runner, 145.42. Uh, and from Algeria, I love this guy, uh, Suman Mula. I watched him in Doha. Oh, my God. He went out like in 53 and came back in 50 and just hammered everybody. Mula knows how to race these kids from Algeria, they i don't know if they play you know roller derby on the streets or whatever but these kids know how to race man and they know how to use their elbows and americans are just too damn polite sometimes okay heat seven marco arop i think marco could medal uh from canada 14505 simon baratoni love saying his name italy 14521 and third is yazi yanis mezian from france Yanis is a pretty good runner. I think he's a young one. There are some very good runners in the 800. I have no idea who's going to win this one, so it's going to be fascinating. But uh, you've heard my diatribe. Okay, I'm going to try to behave now. Let's go to the next event. We're going to talk about the high jump. I love the high jump. The high jump's an interesting event because you're attempting a height, but if you clear it, you go on, and you stop when you fail. So it's kind of a weird juxtaposition. It was a glorious competition. You have Mutaz Essa Barshim, um, who has won three world championships. You have Javon Harrison, who next to Jim Thorpe, the last kid who did what he does um, was Jim Thorpe. Uh, Javon has competed in the Olympics in the high jump and triple jump. And you have Gianmarco Tambiri, who should be an Olympic ten or an Italian tenor. Um, this dude is like an opera singer. He is dramatic. Fans all over the world love him. He is, and he's a great interview too. Sean uh, Marco is great. I knew his dad, but he's not being coached by his pop anymore. He's um, he's worked, figured something else out. But you know what? It's working. So Mutaz went out at two thirty three. I think that and he's had a pretty good season. He's got a new baby. He's very proud of him being a dad, which I think is really cool. He's one of my favorite interviews. I interviewed him in Paris every year, and he's very introspective. Siobhan Harrison, I haven't got to meet yet. Siobhan and Sean Marco were battling. They both cleared 236. And then um, Sean Marco went to 238. He missed twice at 238, moved it up to 240. Siobhan missed three times at 238. So Sean Marco won on misses. Uh, 236 equals the world leader. Siobhan equals the world leader. But what's interesting, too, is one of the themes over the last few years is the re-emergence of Puma as one of the major brands. And in this event, Mr. Tambiri, Mr. Harrison, and Mr. Barshim are all now Puma athletes. They were other brands before that. But Pascal Rowling at Puma has picked up an incredible group of athletes, both youngins and veterans, as they build to Paris 2024 and beyond. And they're actually got some pretty decent shoes now. But I'm fascinated with all how the brands do things. I mean, Nike still has the most athletes, but they've really cut down. And it's probably it's more of a business decision. Adidas has their way of doing it. They have what they call the next generation, but they have a group of athletes who are performing. Grant Holloway, you know, uh Noah Lyles. It's just uh they're they're doing quite well. But so first place, Gianmarco Tambiri. Second place, Siobhan Harrison. Third, Muta Asa Bershim. And in fourth from Cuba, Luis Enrique Zayas, 233 equals his PB. Shelby McEwen from the U.S. was in seventh. That's not bad, 229 uh, SB. So that's the high jump. I love the discus throw. I started to really get into it when, as a kid, I fouled Al Oder. You know, his four times uh, gold medals. And each time, Al was the underdog. 
And each time he had a physical injury beforehand. And I finally got to meet him in 96 and he was still a, a, a big guy. Uh, in 1980, he tried to make the team a fifth time so his daughters would see, you know, because they didn't remember him competing. And that was pretty cool. But we lost uh, Al a few years ago. But I also was privileged enough to spend time and uh, work with John Powell. John was my one of my spiritual leaders when I was doing American track and field. And he actually was pretty brilliant at the whole uh, stock market thing. And one time when I was uh, short on money, he helped me out. And uh, it really meant a lot. He also coached with uh, us at Foothill College. And we just lost John a couple of years ago. John was the oldest guy to win a discus medal. Um, but the, a couple of the people I'm talking about now are really interesting. Valerie Allman, I got to meet Valerie finally at the LA Grand Prix. And I got to meet her coach, Zebulon Sion, who is a big guy at uh, the airport here. And what a nice guy. I mean, and Valerie's very sweet, too. I mean, she's very patient with me. She didn't know I was a if I was a stalker or what I did tell her I wasn't a stalker. So, cause I do kind of warn people, but remember last year at the world champs, Bin Feng upset everybody. And, um, Sandra Perkovic was a silver medalist and Valerie was the bronze. And she was a little frustrated. She had won the Olympic gold medal the year before. So I think she kind of thought, Hey man, maybe I had a shot. Right. And she'd cranked out that 71 46 in La Jolla, which is pretty impressive too. So, but there's a young American discus thrower named Olaga Tosago. Olaga has been around for a while, but she's had a PB of about 65 meters. And um, the competition was going along and Valerie was cranking out there. And in the fifth round, Valerie went 69-23. She had been leading at about 68-87. And Bin Feng had been in the silver medal position. And she had thrown 68-20 seasonal best. Our friend Sandra Perkovich was uh, down a little bit, but she, you know, she was fighting hard. And Jorinda Van uh, Klinken, who had done really well in the um, Europeans last year um, from the Netherlands, she had gone 67-20. So, I mean, it was a really, really high-level competition. So on the last go-round, Malaga Tasaga got in there. And I got to tell you, I was watching her feet in the ring, and she is quick, really quick. She had a PB, and I am not exaggerating. I am not exaggerating. And even though I'm drinking espresso with milk right now, 69.49 meters. Her PB before that was 65.43. That is four meters. That is over 16 and a half feet. The crowd, now this is hungry, baby, okay? Hammer throw, discus, javelin, then goulash, okay? Uh, and maybe chicken paprikash. They went mad, you know, as only Hungarians can do, you know, in the throws. It's one of the fun things about being in Budapest. It was amazing. 69-49. Ben Fang threw. Uh, she didn't prove. Valerie Allman goes over and talks to Coach Sion. Think about that. You are within one throw of taking the goal. That's why it's called track and field in a sport, baby, right? Valerie composed herself and went out there. And had a good throw, but it wasn't enough to beat Malaga to Saga. So Malaga to Saga, 69.49 PB. Valerie Allman, silver medal, 69.23. Bin Feng, 68.20. Shorinda Van Klinken from Netherlands, fourth, 67.20. One of my faves, Sandra Perkovic, who has won, I think, 14 medals in um, throws, like in Europeans and worlds in the olympics i gotta go and count them uh from croatia 66 57 she is a wonderful interview uh and then christian prudens from germany who is quite good uh and quite dangerous most of the time 65 96 so a great discus competition i can't tell you an event so far that's been boring and we're into day four baby okay so Let's go to our next event. Okay, the 400 hurdles for women. This is interesting. There's a lot of stuff going here. Okay, sports fans, hold on to your seats. Hold on to your hats. The 400-meter hurdles is coming up. Now, Sydney McLaughlin LeBron chose not to compete in the 400 hurdles. Then she chose not to compete in the 400 flat. She's got a, a, a niggling injury, small injury. Change the complexion of the event. Femke Bull is really fit. Femke Bull had a 
very difficult mixed four by four. And as she said, she's looking for a little revenge. She's going to run fast. So let's see what happens. Now, heat one, Rochelle Clayton, 5330 PB. Second place, Anna Cockrell from the U.S., 5363 PB. The only two that moved on. Pretty impressive. Uh, Jesse Knight from Great Britain, the, the uh, one of the top hurdlers there, 5451. Jesse's a full-time kindergarten teacher. She's really a trip. We've had some stories about her. Stuart Weir writes about her. In heat two of the semis, it's Femke Bull doing what she does best. I think she ran strong to about hurdle six, and then she very carefully cut it down and ran the easiest 5295 I have ever seen. She's a numero uno. And second is Andronette Knight from Jamaica, 5372. Those two move on. Delilah Muhammad at 5419. I was worried about her. She was able to move on as well. In the third semifinal, Shamir Little, 5281. Sham Bambino. Look, this young woman has been around for a long time. You know, she's still young. And I mean, she's just about, I, just about 31. Look, I'm 64. So I call anybody a kid under 40. So get over it. Kemi Adeyoko from uh, Bahrain. I'm not sure where she was from before. I suspect Nigeria. 53.39 area record. In third, uh, Geneve Russell, 53.69. And in fourth from Italy, Aliomidi. Folo Runso from Italy, 5389 national record. Semifinal is going to be screaming. Okay, let's go on. It's exciting, doesn't it? Hey, you guys like my new haircut? So um, I was looking like a till the hun, and uh, right across from my hotel is a barbershop tattoo place. And no, I didn't get a tattoo, uh, Steve Vitonis. Um, although my brother suggested, I told my brother I was just going to put you know, love my brother or something on my arm. Uh, dude named Benz spent an hour making me look good. So you like this? Looks kind of cool, huh? I look almost professional. Got the hair on the side and everything. And, you know, and they, what was really great is he used a, uh, a straight edge to clear my neck and my mustache. I closed my eyes a little bit. I used to have this guy uh, in uh, from Egypt who, uh, in New York, and he would do a straight edge uh, shave for me. And he would cut my nose hairs with the straight edge, which scared the hell out of me. And he'd be drinking espresso while he's doing it. You know, Akbar. Yeah, him and his son would just crack up because I had to close my eyes. It terrified me. But I loved how, you know, um, a nice shave feels before you're doing an ad presentation or something. So, again, rabbit hole. Sorry, Mike. All right. Oh, we got the men's 400 semifinals. This is really interesting. All right. Let's go to heat one. Antonio Watson one in 44 13 him and vernon norwood were duking it out 44 26 for the Vern. both antonio and vernon norwood pb in third place running a little more conservatively was mr wade vanderkirk you know him world record holder olympic champion two-time world champion he is back baby and he ran a very controlled 44 65 he got the small cube but he's moved on he's gonna be in the final i gotta tell you I think Wade Vandekirk is going to make people hurt like they haven't hurt in a long time. He wants to just go out there and blow it out of the park. I just hope it's a little cooler, and uh, I want him to do well. Wade's a wonderful person, very spiritual person. In the second semi, congrats to Matthew Hudson-Smith. Matthew's gone through injury stuff over the last few years, but he got the silver medal at the— uh, World champs last year in Eugene. Then he won the Europeans. And now he runs a 44-26 area record. That is smoking, man. Matthew, you're on my pinball team. In second place is one of the people I totally respect, Karani James. Karani has a full set gold, silver, bronze in the Olympics, a full set gold, silver, bronze in the world champs. And I think he's going to get a fourth a world champ medal in the 400. He ran 44.58 and moved on. And in third, I'm going to mess his name up because, of course, Mike, I mess everybody's names up. Havard Bentdal Ingvaldsen. Like that? Norway. 44.70. In fourth place, Uga Sato. 44.84 from Japan. He's not moving on. 
But the dude got a PB. The Japanese 4x4 and 4x1 are going to be screaming this year. Um, in seventh place, we should give him a little mention. Dylan Borley, 45-59. Belgium will have a good 4x4, but the Borley brothers are kind of getting to the end of that whole 400 dumb stuff, you know? All right, let's get into heat three of the uh, semis. Quincy Hall, Stephen Gardner, and Sean Bailey were coming off about 280 meters when Stephen Gardner, the defending champion in the 400, dropped to the track in agony. Now, you have to know that after the heats, he was carted away in a wheelchair because it was so damn hot in the waiting room or the uh, qualifying room was rather warm too. Quincy ran 44-43 to win. Sean Bailey from Jamaica, 44-94. And in third, Yuki Joseph Nakajima from Japan, 45 of four. See what I was saying about the Japanese 4 by 4 But this 400 is going to be something special. Our friend Wade Vanneker got injured in 2017 playing a, a celebrity rugby match. Uh, I believe he tore an ACL. They had to get that taken care of. Then they had to get him back in shape. Then they get his head back together. And a lot of credit should go to Lance Brownman, the coach at Pure Athletics. Lance has got a great group of athletes, but the thing that Lance does really well, and I don't like to blow smoke up, you know, his backside. He gives people confidence because he's like, no bullshit. He's just like, if I ask Lance a question, I get an answer. If I don't want to get the answer, I don't ask him the question. And I love to sit down with him every once in a while to track me and just, hey, what do you think? And, uh, but to observe him, and the last time I got to observe him was 2016. We were over in um, Herzo, the Adidas, uh, Herzo Ganarsh, the Adidas uh, HQ, and they were doing a track meet there. And I got to watch the kids uh, work out for a while. But I love to observe coaches, and Lance is just, he exudes confidence, but it's a quiet confidence. And the kids know that the athletes, and I call everybody kids, so please don't say I'm being condescending. Part of his demeanor is what gives athletes confidence. That's part of the story, I think, of Wade Vanekirk's reemergence. To come back as a world record holder in the 400 flat, one of the toughest events in all of track and field. When he ran his world record, he collapsed, man. He used it all. And he's, you know, unless you've run a 400 like that. You know, I ran 10,000s and 5,000s and 1,500s and 1, marathons, and I got to tell you, a 400 all out still scares the hell out of me. So it's going to be really interesting. But uh, we have got a great field for the next round for the final. So we'll tell you more about that. Okay. This is the women's 1500 meter final. Okay. Come on. Faith Kipiagan. Faith Kipiagan, if she ran, she was going to win this race. She could start slow and kick it in. She could go fast and make everybody hurt and pass out on the track. She could go slow for the first half and just wind it up and make people, you know, want to have Taco Bell, which is my way of saying you're just not engaged. Okay. So they went out slow, 65 second first lap, which is a what pace for that? Yeah, that is like a, uh, yeah, it's like a 420 uh, mile, but you're not running a 420 mile. Then they hit the half in 211, and I was just going, oh, my God. Why didn't anybody think of, like, pushing it? Well, Fate's controlling the pace. Right next to her was Laura Muir, Daribi uh, Welteshi, and Chiara Majin. And Nelly uh, Chepchikir was watching. They went through in 211. They hit the bell at 258, and they hit the third lap at 312. And by then... Faith was starting to move. But guess who had been sitting in back for the whole race? Safan Hassan, you know, one of our faves, right? Safan had a very difficult 10,000 where she was, I think, guaranteed of a medal. And with about 12 meters to go, she just collapsed. There was nothing left. She ended up finishing 11. Gudaf Segei won. It was an Ethiopian sweep. Well, Safan wasn't going to let that thing happen. That woman was moving. She moved from 12th to 6th to into 3rd and was fighting with Daribi Welteji. But no one was going to catch Faith Kipiagan. She ran 354.87. 
Taribi ran 355.69. Safan in bronze, 356 flat. Chiara Magin set a national record for Ireland, 356.61. And I got to talk to Robert Heffernan, the superstar of the walks, one of the coolest dudes ever. And I'd given him some shit yesterday because I didn't know who he was, and then I figured it out. So I'm continuing to worship him now. But uh, Ciara Magin, national record for Ireland in fourth. In fifth, a new up-and-comer, Justin Legat, told me about her. Nellie Chep Churcher, she had a big kick, 357.90 PB. In sixth was our friend Laura Muir, 358.58. I thought she'd run a little faster, but she just ran a 356. So Jessica Hull, seventh, 359.54. Katie Snowden, who just ran a 356. Now it's a second. She hadn't broken four minutes before. She ran a 359.65 for eighth. Corey Ann McGee from the U.S. was 10th in 401. Ludovica Cavalli, 11th place, 401.84 PB. That's got to tell you something. And Melissa Courtney Bryant, 403.31. But the track temperature during the 1500 was 112 degrees. Totally blows my mind. It is really difficult to breathe that uh, temperature on a track. I don't know how the photographers, I don't know how they're not losing it. It's really hot here. At nine o'clock tonight, it was 95 degrees, 80% humidity. I'm waiting for a big thunderstorm, but you know, I could be just, you know, hyperventilating. So that was the women's 1500. Faith Kipiegan is the greatest women's 1500 meter runner of all time. She is the GOAT. I could argue that she is the best male or female at 1500 in terms. She has won a medal every year since 2014. Even when she had a baby, man, she won the silver that year. Faith is a lovely athlete. Stuart Weir interviews her all the time. They have a good relationship. I've got to interview her a few times. She has a very strong faith. She's very close to her family. She gets it. She trains hard. She has a life outside of track and field. Very smart thing to do. And again, Chiara Magine, I got to tell you, Chiara's on my pinball team. She, This Irish runner is really something. She's going to pick up more medals. Laura Muir is going to get another medal. And my friend Jessica Hull. I got to meet Jessica in Doha, and she was so nice. Her and her dad watched some of the stuff on Run, Blog, Run, and it was very nice. And Katie Snowden, very proud of Katie Snowden uh, from the UA Under Armour Club. That's a huge PB. Pretty cool stuff. Okay. So great 1500. Everybody who was in there should be very pleased with their competition. Okay. And Safan Hassan, you know, Safan is so much fun. She is a total wackadoodle. But, you know, I saw her lose her stuff in 2015 after um, Gonziba Dababa put like six seconds on her in the 1500 world record. And I think it really annoyed the living hell out of her. And I remember her speaking in French. I didn't understand the Arabic, but the French was just kind of like, how can someone beat me by six seconds? And I think it changed the way Safan looked at things. But she seems to have a more whimsical approach to stuff. She could have been destroyed coming so close after 20, almost 25 laps of winning a medal and collapsing. And I don't think it was anything, but she was tired as hell, you know. And right after that, Femke Bull fell and was like, Netherlands, do you guys have a curse? But they're looking good now, you know, and I, I expect Femke to just, I think Femke is going to break 51 seconds in the 400 kids, 400 hurdles. Okay. All right. The 3000 meter steeplechase. I have been looking forward to this race since February. Okay. La Mercha Gurma ran a, like a 724 world record indoors at the 3000. He has been trying to figure a way to beat Sufyan El Bacali, the Olympic and world champion. And Mr. Bacali is one tough Moroccan. I met him in Doha. And thanks to um, a Caroline Faith, one of the premier agents and one of the top women agents in the sport. It's her and uh, Karen Locke are two of my faves. But she uh, represents Sufyan. So I did this interview with him. And it was a mixture of Arabic, French, English. And I had the coach there, too. And Sufyan is a student of the event. He trains as a 1500 meter runner. He barely does barriers because he's pretty good at him. His coach doesn't want him to get hurt. But this guy knows that he has got a bullseye, a bullseye baby on his back. And Lamecha Gurma had the bow and arrow. 
the race was really interesting. 250 for the first 1K, 830 pace. Then they dropped it down. It didn't drop down much, 245. Um, then it got interesting. They ran a, a last 1K, and this is just mind-boggling to me. It was uh, 228, and that last lap was about a 56. And what happened was is you get this pack, and it starts to string out. And just as the first lap to go comes, it's 7.05. Um, Lamecha decides, this is the time I've got to break him because I haven't broken him yet. Gurma was leading most of the way. And uh, Sufyan al Bakali was lurking. Ibrahim Kibiwat was right there with uh, Leonard Bett and George Beamish and Ryuji Mora and Simon Kovic. I thought Kovic was really going to lay it down. With 300 to go. Bacali and Germa were away, and we're sitting up the stands with Dave Hunter and Justin Lagat. And Justin had picked uh, Bacali months ago, and uh, as did I. I love Lamecha. I think he runs with so much spirit. But Lamecha's ability to run in a championship race is just not where Bacali's is. Bacali is one of the finest steepler, and he's He's one of the finest racers, and I love racers. World records are great, but if you can't race, baby, you know, how do you win a championship, right? So 300 to go. Uh, Elba Colley and Germa are moving away. They've probably got 10 meters on Kibiwat and Bet. And then Georgie Beamish was really running well at the last, right before the last water jump. I'm, I'm watching Bacali and trying to figure out, El Bacali and trying to figure out where he's going to move. About 30 meters before the last water jump, he had a planet. You see him start to accelerate. He has beautiful form over the barriers, probably the best in the sport right now. He has four meters immediately on Gurma. He comes off the barrier, boom, last barrier, boom, boom, boom. He's doing this just as he comes across the line on 8.03. 53, Mamacha Gurma, 805.44, Abraham Kibiwat, 811.98, Leonard Bett, first to second Kenyan, 812.26, George Beamish, Gordy Beamish, as he's known, 813.46, which I believe is just above the national record he set when he broke Pete Renner's record from back in 1984. I remember Pete, and before that, Ewan uh, Robertson, Robinson, uh, who was a New Zealand uh, steepler. Uh, he'd run in Montreal. And then Ryuji Mura, who's the Australian record holder, was sixth in 8.13.70. The Americans that uh, I was talking about, Kenneth Rooks, 10th place, 8.20. Pretty good for his first world championships. And Isaac Updike, 8.30.67 PB. Now, that just doesn't make sense. So I'll have to check that one. He was 16th. But you know what? It was a spectacular steeplechase, very satisfying, and a very satisfying evening with two field events and two distance events. Tomorrow, we have a crazy long day. I'm just going to tell you a little bit about it. Uh, you can see our preview, too. We start at 10.05 with the women's 800 heats. So I'm going to get a story up about Nia Adkins right now. Then we have the men's qualifying for the pole vault, javelin, long jump, 200-meter heats for women and 200-meter heats for men. We get to see the Noister tomorrow, man, you know? And uh, Shakari, who had that glorious 100-meter win. So the U.S. won the 100 on Monday night, Tuesday night, uh, men's and then the women's. Uh, first time since, what, 2000? Yeah, first time women since 2017. And then there'll be a, uh, thank God, there'll be like a uh, six-hour break in the afternoon so I can take a nap or go find some air conditioning. It's supposed to be like 90 tomorrow, 95. Hammer throw, 5,000 heats. They move to the evening, thank God. 3,000 women heats. Semifinals of the 100 hurdles, but the three finals, 1,500-meter men's, whoa. 400-meter women's, ooh. 400-meter hurdles men, ooh. It'll be a great night tomorrow night. Every night has been better than the night before. Can you believe it? Okay, thanks to Mike Deering, who needs to get some sleep now, and he's got some... Stuff to edit because, you know, Larry talks a lot. Anyway, this is um, our review of day four, the 22nd of August, 2023. 
This is the World Outdoor Athletics Championships. It's my favorite thing to go to um, in Budapest, Hungary. Uh, I am half Hungarian. My grandpa, Adam, was born in Budapest. And uh, he and his family moved to the U.S. in 1900 with his three sisters and his mom and dad. Uh, they went to St. Louis for a while. Then they went up to Oregon, uh, not to Oregon, to uh, 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 um, Iowa, and then moved back to Missouri. So anyway, uh, but I'm having goulash every day and I'm trying different Hungarian foods. I'm saying hi to people and they think I'm a little weird, but, you know, it's OK. I'm an American. I can get away with it. All right. Have a great evening. Mike Deering, thank you very much for doing it. I got to tell you, day two, the, the review of day two was pretty awesome. I just saw the day three stuff, guys. Everybody's going to totally dig it. Uh, Mike's doing some great graphics for us. It's really exciting. We've really upped our game. Uh, Deji Goyimbu's doing some nice interviews. Justin Lagat, Stuart Weir's doing some great pieces. He did a killer piece on the 100. And Cathal Dennehy has done pieces on uh, Katrina Johnson Thompson, Ryan Krauser, and he's doing one on Grant Holloway tomorrow. They're going to be fun. We're having a great time. Please check out our coverage and check out Peacock and NBC TV. I watched the whole um, episode last night on NBC. It was killer. Okay. Have a good evening.